start sharing my iPad. Okay, can can anyone uh, confirm that you can see my uh, iPad screen? Okay, can you see the chat? Yes, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so um, starting with function, very basic thing. I know that you all know better than I do what is a function, but I will emphasize on two things. I always see functions as machines that um, well they have inputs and they have a name while well, every piece any every item should have a name because when we want to address them and when you put in input it will do some work on that input and spit out something it, well, input, uh, you can say that, well, I don't know what I'm going to put in as input, but whatever you put, this machine will do something and the output will be uh, something which depends on X. So this notation is very important because it says that which machine worked on this input and what is the input that it spits out. So it works on. And the whole thing f of x is the output itself. Um, usually, or most of the time, what we will see is the function, mathematical functions are going to be uh, given in uh, something like this. f of x is equal to expression in x. What I want you to notice, this is the second thing I want to mention in terms of functions. There is a good definition for function. You can go read that. Uh, but, but here specifically, what I want you to be able to do is to work with functions. And you have to see this X as just a placeholder. You can take it out. For example, if your function is f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 1, what this means is not, this is not just an equation in variable x. It is a recipe. It says whatever the input is, you first square it, multiply it, and then multiply that input by 3 and add the x square, the squares of that input to 3x, three times that input, subtract one. It is a recipe. And if someone takes that x out and puts something else, well, you, you have to replace everything in x, um, replace the, all the x's in that expression by that new thing. Well, if I put t, it will be t squared plus 3t minus t. If I put a flower there, it will be flower squared, if that has a meaning, plus three times a flower minus one. This is very key for us. X is not just a variable there. It's just a placeholder. You replace it by anything, it will, that thing will replace all the x's on the right hand side. That's that's key thing for us to understand. As a result of this, we have something called evaluation, meaning that for any given number, you want to find what will happen if I replace x by that number. Or in other words, evaluate function at the given point. This means that I'm trying to do f at a zero. And the recipe tells me whatever is input, you score it and add one to that. This is one. Well, I said every x, that was a lie. There are possible x's that I can use in that recipe. And while well, we, I have to use that, that, that part, only to those kind of x's 
when I'm trying to evaluate uh, my function. Um, or for example, something like this guy here at four. So I am trying to, to do this. Evaluate means what? Means find the output of this machine when you use four as input. And this means that root four over four squared minus two, this is two over 16 minus two, 14, one over seven. And while we have uh, the piecewise defined functions, the piecewise defined functions are a little bit different, meaning that the assignment, the way the machine works, uh, it will do different things for different inputs. And these are the criteria based on which the function works. This says that if, this is the way you read it, if the input is a number less than one, you do X minus three. If X, the input is between one and three, including the endpoints, then you do this recipe for that. And if X is bigger than three, this is like x, absolute value of x minus 3x, okay? Uh, for example, here, when you do uh, want to evaluate this function at two, first thing you do is like, you come and find uh, which one of these intervals the input two belongs to, and you see that, oh, two is here. Yes, that means that I have to use the corresponding formula and then plug in x equal to two. That's sometimes you will see me writing. Just, I want to emphasize that I am specifically for x equal to two, I'm using this notation. And that means two squared minus two is equal to two. H at zero, first thing you go and see that, oh, zero belongs to this interval. So I have to use the corresponding formula. And that means that I will use this formula and plug in zero equal to three. And that means zero minus three equal to negative. No, the function is not X minus three. The function is not X squared minus X. The function is not absolute value of X minus three X. The function is this whole assignment. And if you don't know which, um, which domain your input belongs to, you cannot write specifically which formula h of x is equal to, okay? That's, that's very important part of um, functions that we will work with. There is only one thing down here. Can anyone tell me what is this guy? That's absolute value. Absolute value function. Uh, can, can you tell me how, how does it work? Uh, sorry, I missed, is that uh, uh, tired? Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, it's like, if you were to imagine it in real life, it's kind of like any negative values become positive. Oh, I see. So, so if you, you're saying that if, if I have absolute value of negative one, it will be one. One. You basically drop yeah. the negative sign there. Yeah. Like if it, like the way I was always taught it is if it's distance, you can't have negative one mile. I see. Just okay. Oh, that's also a nice thing. It says that while well, you're basically finding the distance of X from zero. Okay, that, that's correct, that's correct, that's nice. Let me see what does Vilo have for us to say here. Um, could you also describe it as um, like multiplying by a negative number? Like there's an invisible negative oh, number? Oh, uh, but in that case, the absolute value of two, for example, will be, you multiply by negative, then it will be negative two. Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry, I meant um, actually, yeah, I think it, it was a previous definition, my apologies. Like you change it, instead of it being a negative, you get rid of the negative number. Okay, no, what, okay, don't, don't change your, you have some good idea there, but you have to be a little bit careful. We are not always multiplying the numbers by negative sign. We only multiply them if they, if it is negative. 
So oh, yeah. the absolute value of x is not negative x. It's only negative x when x is a negative number. In other words, you multiply another negative sign to a negative number, you get the positive number out, yes? Yeah. But if x is bigger than zero, you just, absolute value just spits out that same x. Yes, okay. For, for zero also, we can include it either there or down, doesn't matter in that case because it doesn't have any, any sign in either case. So, uh, and that shows that what, if you go very carefully, you may, you may have easy ways of remembering what is absolute value. Well, always spits out a positive number or it's distant. But when it comes to math or calculus specifically, this is the way you should remember this function. Absolute value is a piecewise defined function, um, which is given by this, this notation. I'll get back to this in an example, but uh, I think this was the basics of how the function works and the value of the function. Is there any question, any comments before I move to the next uh, part? Okay. Um, I don't know what is this up there. Okay, it's it's it wasn't supposed to be here, so I need to delete that. Oh, come on. Delete it. Okay. So um, here now we are um, we are trying to see what is the graph of the function. Okay, uh, when you have a function, as you know, function is nothing but an assignment. So it means that for any input x, well, possible values of x, it assigns an output value which, denote, which we denoted by f of x. It means that it, the machine is f and the output depends on x. Now, it, well, we work with the, um, with the functions which uh, has numbers as their input, okay? Now, I, out of any given number, I can create a point on the plane. The way it works is this. Well, I put the input as the first um, component coordinate of the point, and I put the corresponding output as its second component, okay? Remember that points on the plane is pair of numbers. So you should have the first one and the second one. And that way you get, well, for example, if you plug in one, if one is a possible uh, value for X to plug in, so you will get one and somewhere F of one. Uh, then if when you plug in, I don't know, pi, you get pi as first component and F of pi. And then if you repeat all these points, well, no one can do all the points because there are uncountable points. But if you have enough points, you will see there is a pattern that these, these guys are following. And that will give you a curve. That is called the graph of the function f. The sketching graph is not an easy act, uh, easy task to complete. It needs tons of knowledge and uh, skill um, that we will be able to get all these things after, I think in chapter four, applications of derivatives. But for the moment, we, uh, we assume that you guys, the students, are able to sketch few things. And out of all these, I can write at least a list, you have to be able to sketch the graph of what's called quadratic formulas. Quadratic functions, sorry. Can anyone tell me what, what is a quadratic function?
it's a polynomial, meaning that it will have only uh, powers, integer powers, well, positive integer powers of x and constant. And uh, when you have something like this. And uh, we assume that you know how to draw such, such function because you already worked uh, on these functions and the, the graph of these functions are uh, basically parabola. The other one is linear. So I should have written linear functions first. This is again a polynomial and it is of this form, degree one polynomial. And you know that the graph of any linear function is, 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 wow. A line. A line, thank you. The name is there, yes. And you see this kind of information will be helpful for us to when we are sketching and we, just by knowing these information, we won't need to go through all those steps, finding all those points. We just need to gather enough information to be able to do these ones. And then there will be um, examples of simple um, rational functions. And um, a little bit, at least you should be able to know some of these guys. And while well, uh, the graph of such functions are going to be, um, I, I believe you have done some work on these kinds of functions, and but it will be either like that or the other way around. So it has both vertical asymptotes, we'll get back to that in more details and horizontal asymptote. But for these ones, I specifically expect that you know how to deal with uh, these functions. Well, the rest, well, it needs work. Even if, if you turn this guy to the three, the power three other than the function x cubed, it's not easy. You have to work a lot to understand what is going on there. And, uh, and that's what we will learn uh, at the end of the chapter for how to sketch the graph of general functions. Well, let us let me do some examples. For example, this guy is quadratic. And we need to draw a parabola. But when it comes for parabola, there are a few things that you have to know. Parabola has very general shape like this. There is this point at which it changes being increasing or decreasing. And we call that point vertex. And then there are, there, it has a symmetry axis like that. And it's either uh, downward or upward. And uh, well, quickly I will go over these ones, vertex. Uh, you find it, well, it's a point on the plane, so I need pair of numbers, minus b over 2a, and then evaluate the function at that point. For example, in this case, can anyone tell me what is b for this quadratic function? Two. Uh, which two? Is this two or that two? Uh... The negative two, I believe. Okay, yes. This is this is B, this is C. And what is A? One. One, yes. So um, so I have minus negative two over two times one, and then value of the function. This is like negative times negative two is two over two is one. So I have to evaluate that. And in this case is one, and evaluate one, you get just one. So we know that the vertex is one, one. The symmetry, uh, axis of symmetry is x equal to minus b over 2a, which we already found. Um, the reason that I'm writing x equal to, you remember that x equal to number is equation for line and specifically is a vertical line. And then is this upward or downward? 
This is given by the sign of the coefficient of x score a. If a is negative, it's downward. If a is positive, it's upward. Later on, we will understand why all these things happening. And we will actually figure out why this is the vertex point, why this is upward and downward. In this case, a is one, so it is positive. Our graph, our parabola is going to be upward. And well, now I have almost all the information that I want to know. So this is x equal to one. Let me say this is x equal to one. This is some axis of symmetry. One, uh, one and one here is the vertex. And then we have, um, it's upward. Now, when you're trying to put an upward uh, parabola here, you have tons of choices, yes? So this could be one, this could be one, uh, this could be one. Which one is that? Just to fix that, I will need few sample points. Just that's the last piece, sample points. Um, for example, I can put X equal to zero. I would say always pick the, uh, the first component of your um, parabola and move two points, two numbers down or up, doesn't matter. So in this case, I'm going down. If X is one, zero, then F at zero is two. So I have a point zero two. If X is negative one, F at negative one is what? So this is two uh, plus two plus one. This will be five. So I have another point, uh, negative one and five. So uh, the other point, I can now put it on here. So this was zero one, this is uh, zero two. The other one, negative one, somewhere here. This, let me just write zero and five. By fixing, actually only one is enough, but uh, if you fix two, that would help us better to sketch the graph. Well, that's only one side. We know that it's symmetric with respect to x equal to zero. That's the other side. Kind of, yeah. That's, that's why we say it's, it's a sketch. I'm not claiming this is the best parable I can put down there. Uh, for, for quadratic ones, actually we have another way of sketching and that's transformation of, or transfers of the graph of the, the normal parabola. Uh, I will talk about that in a little bit down there, but uh, for the quadratic ones, you have to know how to find complete score to be able to do that kind of thing. For example, this guy, is the same thing as x minus one squared plus one. So it means that you can transfer y equal to x squared, the normal parabola using some transformation and get the graph of that. I'll talk about that in the third example for different function, but this is a good example, find the graph using um, transformations of the standard parable. Ooh. This is do it yourself. Any questions, any comments before I move to the next one? Okay, before I go, I do more things there. I have here, I have a piecewise defined function. How do I draw piecewise defined function? The graph of piecewise defined function. Okay, here, for example, I have two formulas. So I will need to draw y equal to two x minus one, which is a line. And then I, I already draw the parabola here. 
So I will copy that one and bring it down. So let's see what we can do with that. This is the only good thing about online uh, classes. I can copy paste my graphs. Okay, so I'll delete extra things here so that I don't have. Uh... Okay, I, I can also do uh, the graph of the line, y equal to two x. Remember the way the graph of lines go is that, well, you know that every line is fixed by two points. Um, uh, so here means that if I plug in x equal to zero, for example, I will get a negative one. So this line is going to pass through this guy and x equal to, let's say one, if at one is going to be uh, one. So one and one is the other. So my graph uh, for this guy will go uh, zero, negative one, this point and that point. This is just by knowing that the, the line, every line can be fixed by just knowing two points on the line. And since we know we knew that this is a linear function, so I don't need to put tons of points there and find the trend. I just need to pick two points and draw the line passing through them. Um, I see some messages there. Again, please, if you have questions, raise your hand because I don't have assistant here. I won't be able, I won't be able to check the chats every second. So. You raise your hand, ask your question, please. That way I, I can uh, make sure that I answer the questions. Okay, this is bad. This is not graph of a function. Can anyone tell me why this is not graph of a function? The, way, the, 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 the graph that I draw on the, on the plane is not graph of a function. Can anyone tell me why? Yeah, Liam. A function, oh, okay. Oh uh, yeah, sorry about that. There's uh, multiple values for each X value, multiple uh, Y values. Do you remember specifically the name for the test? Name test? Oh, it's a, uh, uh, I know you do you scan like left to right, but I don't remember exactly what it's called now. Let um, me see if Crystal the, knows that. The vertical line test? Yes, yes. So it says that if you have a graph, if you draw the vertical line uh, at every point, at most it must intersect with that vertical line once. Here, for example, you see there are twice. So this is not graph of a function. What did I make? What, 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 what is my mistake? The mistake is that 2x minus 1 is not the function. The function is defined as 2x minus 1 only for x is bigger than or equal to 0. It means that I have to throw away all the part, all the points that comes for x is less than zero. Remember that this part is x less than, oh, sorry. This is x less than equal to, this is less than zero, and this is x bigger than zero. And the parabola only is the function for values of x which, is, which are less than zero. So, uh, so in other words, I have to delete oops, all these parts. Yes, kind of, yeah. There is one thing that we have to make sure that uh, when we are sketching graph of piecewise defined function, we have to emphasize what happens at the separating point, the point at which the domain or the, the function uh, changes the formula. Here, x equal to zero. At x equal to zero, the function is given by this linear uh, formula. And that means that I have to emphasize that the graph, we are including the point uh, with x equal to zero from the line. 
And we have to go a little bit further. We have to say that, oh, I'm not including the point from parabola, which in this case is a little bit different one. So I put solid point here just to say that, oh, this is included on this piece of the curve. And I use the hollow uh, bullet there to emphasize that the value of the function is not given by that part of the, uh, the graph. Any questions, any comments here? Yes, please go ahead. We Sorry, would you mind explaining that last part one more time about the... Um... The separating point. Yes. Okay, so you see, when I draw these ones and I deleted all the other pieces, there is this point uh, x equal to zero. I haven't yet fixed. I only said x for less than zero is this, x bigger than zero is that. Now, the point is that, are we going to take this point as the point of the graph or this point at point of the graph for the point of the graph. Since X is not included for the quadratic one, we have to see that, oh, this point is not included in our graph. To emphasize that, I put a big hollow bullet there just to say that, oh, this point is not included. On the other hand, to emphasize that, oh, this zero, when, when you plug in zero, the linear equation is used and this gives us this point on the graph. I put big solid bullet there to emphasize that, oh, this is the point on the graph. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you. Okay. Um, the example uh, that the next example is graphing a function um, uh, which is given by this uh, absolute value. Uh, Kiara, please go ahead. I just had a quick question for the graphing. Yes, How yes. would you or would you have to write the domain for that? Uh, in this case, you see um, the way it is given in the piecewise defined function. Um, well, first of all, the domains are kind of given here. It just says for which values of x the function is defined. But if you look, you see that both formulas are, um, are polynomials. Polynomials are defined everywhere. And that means that, uh, that it is, um, uh, um, the domain, we can plug in every number that we want into these ones. So if there is no restriction given by this equation, which we see there is no, that means that uh, uh, the domain is the whole real life. There was, um, that makes sense, thank you. But there was like quite a specific way that the video on domains showed how you would graph, say, a rational, I mean, how you would write the domain of a rational function versus a polynomial, like the formatting. So mm -hmm. say your piecewise function had partially a rational function and then partially- Yara, could you could you please keep the question because I, I have the next topic on okay. the domains. If we can move there, hopefully, if not next week, okay? I will okay. talk about that. Uh, but you're right, when it comes to domains, I, I, I have to emphasize on two things. Uh, the denominator cannot be zero under the score root cannot be negative number. And that's that's how all this domain issue comes from. Okay, thank you. Yes, okay. So how to start working with this function? So when you look at this function, the first thing you should see, at least after this session, you have to see is this is a piecewise defined function. Can anyone say why? Um, because it's a uh, absolute form function. So it'll have the little uh, sharp 
dip, I guess. I'm not sure how to explain. Um, yeah, you have the right idea, but when the way you put it, it is a little bit, <laughs> but yes, the, the issue comes from that absolute value. Let me see Erin, uh, please, can you? Um, it's piecewise because when your values are less than zero, um, you have to take, you have to multiply the X value by negative one to make the absolute value. Uh, but if it's greater than or equal to zero, you don't do anything and you just plug it in as normal. Um, that's also correct. Uh, let me just wrap up those two answers and give you one thing. It is piecewise defined because absolute value is piecewise defined. So it will do different things for different values. That, that's simple, yes? But both of what you mentioned were, were exactly correct. And that's the starting point. Yes, you see that there's absolute value there. And absolute value is piecewise. That means the function is piecewise. There are two ways to draw, to sketch this guy. Method one is that I'll say that write the piecewise defined formula. So find uh, the uh, piece wise defined uh, function expressing this. And then you know, you do sketch that part, the other part, and then delete the extra things, yes? So for that, I won't do this complete, but I will show you some algebra, which is going to be useful for you. When X is positive, absolute value of X is x and when it is negative it is minus x well i i will include the equality on the positive side doesn't matter in both then i see that there is this absolute value of x minus three it means that i am going to plug in x minus sorry x minus two i'm going to plug in x minus two as input of absolute value so it means that wherever you see X now in this formula, you have to change it to X minus two. So this will be X minus two if X minus two is bigger than or equal to zero. This is minus X minus two if X minus two is less than zero. I can do a little bit of work here. So X minus two bigger than or equal to zero is equivalent of saying that X is bigger than or equal to two x minus two is less than zero is equivalent way of saying this is less than two. So my absolute value part is just rewriting that with the replaced the conditions. Oops. Now, I have to multiply that by three. When you're multiplying a whole function by three, only the values changes. So this is how the conditions, you don't need to change it because it's, it does not depend on the, the value, the, the inputs. This says the output, whatever the output is multiplied by three. So I just need to multiply these pieces by that. And then the last one is that you add uh, or subtract one from this. So this will be three X minus six minus one, six minus uh, six minus three X minus one for X is bigger than equal to two X is less than two. And uh, well, that is my function now. So H of X is nothing but three X minus seven for X is bigger than or equal to two and five minus three X for X is less than, oh, I made a bad copy paste mistake there. Okay. Well, then now you can go ahead and write that one as, as the form, uh, well, sketch the graph of each piece and then delete the extra one. Uh, Pabiha, please. Uh, I had a question about like why the, uh, for negative X, like for the absolute value of X, for yeah. negative X, why yeah. would it be X is less than zero, but not X is less than or equal to zero? Oh, you see, 
Absolute value of zero. What is absolute value of zero? Zero. Zero. You can say it is either zero itself or I multiply zero by negative one. Both of them are the same thing, yes? Yeah. Okay. So I can include this either there or down oh, here. Okay. It will be the same thing because the value that those guys for x equal to zero gives me are the same. Okay. It really doesn't matter which one you include. Mm, okay, thank you. Okay. So then I will leave this one again for you to complete because this is now simple. But the, the other method that I will do here, uh, graph transformation. Uh, let me see if I can do it in three minutes. Uh, Fabiha, do you still have question? Or if not, please lower your hand. Okay, thank you. So the other one is the uh, graph. So, um, well, we know that the graph of this function actually, uh, someone mentioned, it was Tyler, I believe, that absolute value of X is this funny uh, with corner guy, yes? So it goes like this. Oh. Um, again. This is the this is the graph. Well, you can do that. You can sketch that one yourself because now you have piecewise defined way of absolute value, and you can. That's another example for you to do. But then, if I call this one f one, I need to change x to x minus two. And then uh, after that, I will get that another function. I'll call it x f2. Then I need to multiply this, the third, the second function by uh, three. And that will give me the third function, which is three absolute value of x minus two. And the last one, I just need to uh, send F3 to F3 minus one. So that is my function, the last function, which is HX. And this is absolute value, three times absolute value X minus two minus one. These are the transformation. These are the works that I can't translate it in terms of graphs. Before I do that, let me see what is the question Leon has for me. Is the order that you go from F1 to F2 and F2 to F3 relevant? Um, yeah, sometimes if you change the order, you may need to change the values that you apply for the transformation. For okay. example, the first transformation and second transformation, you can change the order. But if you change the order of the, the second one and third one, uh, you have to change this number here. You have to transfer it one over three, neg negative one over three, and then multiply the whole thing by three. So uh, it, is, it is, the order is relevant, meaning that uh, if you change the order, you may need to apply a little bit different transformation. Okay. Okay, good. So, uh, but what are these ones, uh, the translations of these transformation in terms of graphs? This sending X to X minus two is a horizontal shift to the right two units. So it means that I can just copy this whole thing here and then paste it and then uh, try to transfer it. So oops, I, I can then uh, shift it, yes. So I'll do this piece here and shift the two units to the right. So zero, oops. That's not nice. Okay, zero or that corner goes from uh, 
zero to two, and the intersection will be two again. When you multiply a whole function by three, this has a meaning in terms of the graphs. This is uh, stretching uh, vertically by factor of three. So it means that, so I can take this one again, and then choose this thing here. And then, uh, oops, uh, I want to do this. You see, multiply everything by three. That's how the stretching goes. It means that while the point that was on the x-axis will stay on the x-axis, but the point which was at two now goes up to uh, six. Um, Anushka, yes, please go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask if uh, the first transformation was it, um, should it be towards the left or towards the right because it's x minus two? So, um, so that's that's the way the transformation works. If a is positive, you turn x to x minus a. This is a shift, right, uh, horizontal shift to the right, uh, A units. So that minus is actually part of this story. Um, in other words, when I plug in two in this guy, it's as if I plugged in zero here. So that's why it shifted to the right. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, well, very, very last one. Okay, I did make a little bit of mess here because um, um, I should do this one lower, lower it down there so that I don't screw up with the notes. Yes, and then this is up goes to the six. Six. Now I want to do one more. This this transformation is now vertical shift, one unit downward. There is a difference how the vertical and horizontal shift works. And now here I will do one unit downward. So it means that I choose this whole thing here and take it one unit down. Okay. So just to emphasize that what kind of changes I'm applying, I I follow, I try to do the follow-up on on what is the changes uh, or what are the changes for uh, the points. Here uh, now two zero goes to two negative one and zero six goes to uh, zero five. And that's the graph. Ooh, I am gone way beyond. So let me just write this one and then uh, call the day shift vertical uh, one unit downward. So that way we found the graph of the function just by knowing what is the graph of the absolute value which was that V-shape graph. Okay, I'll stop here. On, on, on uh, next week, we will continue. I have more content ready for you, but uh, that will be next week. I will go over that. I will stay here. I will answer the questions. Um, uh, you can stay, but if you have something else to do or it's time for you to leave, please go ahead and I won't do anything new. Let me pause this video first.